Namaste. Hey, this is Trevor Seven, and this is going to be a volume kinesis demonstration, which is the psychic manipulation of insects. And there's a few things I failed to mention in the video, so I thought I'd put together a little intro here and do it outdoors on this beautiful spring day. Uh, and first and foremost, I just want to say that uh, wasps will sting you. <laughs> a friend of mine by the name of Jesse was over here, and we were shooting guns, and a rainstorm came from out of nowhere, so we ducked in this little shed here behind me. And there was a nest of wasps and he was nervous i mean <laughs> really nervous scared that he was going to get stung and after a few minutes by golly he did get stung and i did not i was standing right next to him you know so i think a lot of this has to do with your state of mind and your emotions you know when we're working with inanimate objects we're dealing with empathy a lot but with the insects the root um, energy i guess you would say is love you know, just make sure you have love and respect and adoration for whatever it is you're working with. And the insects can sense this, I think, somehow. You know, in my opinion, every living creature is amazing in its own way. And it's not like our brain is overpowering their little tiny bug brain or anything like that. It's just sort of this interconnectedness that we've all discovered when we learn how to do psychokinesis. But it's a little bit different niche, you know, when we're working with insects. So my advice would be is to be in a, a place, you know how you feel when you get the yard all mowed and the house clean and the kids are put away and you know everything's done and you just have that feeling of contentment and satisfaction. That's kind of the demeanor you need to have when you're working with these insects. You know, it's like I said, it's not a control thing. It's more of a cooperation type thing. So I just wanted to throw that in there. And I also want to mention that this applies not only to insects, but with animals and, and whatnot. So, you know, if you kind of get the hang of this and you're getting some response, uh, you, know, you know that you're in the right, your heart is in the right place. And it doesn't take a lot of um, energy or anything. It, it's just basically more about the love. So keep the love in your heart and, and I think you'll be able to do this fairly, fairly easily. But like I said, wasps will sting you. So definitely start with, with something easy to work with like a fly or an ant or something like that. And you know, I've had a lot of people asking, when's your next video? When's your next video? And this is great. I'm glad you guys are excited for my uploads. I'm happy to do it. And as long as you guys keep watching, I'll keep making them. But I have to tell you, this time of year is kind of busy for me. I'm trying to, you know, get my, my garden taken care of. And I have newborn puppies to deal with and all sorts of things going on. But I am still going to be doing uploads about every two or three weeks. So I appreciate your guys' patience. And I really appreciate you guys watching this video. And my upcoming video is going to be about... Um, uh, using an EMF meter to measure psychokinetic energy and I always like to have something to share some type of insight to share before I don't want to upload a video and say oh hey look what I can do that type of thing who cares what I can do it's what we can do and as soon as I nail down some specifics of what's happening you know I can't make heads or tail of what's going on right now because I can move the target and it registers on the meter sometimes and I move the target another time and it doesn't register so I think there's some different forms of energy or things that, that are being done here and until I can kind of get a grasp on what exactly is happening I'm going to hold up on that video so a lot of the footage I'm sharing today is actually old footage and some of my better uh, demonstrations I don't have on camera just like with psychokinesis most of them happen you know organically when you're just doing a little practice session without the camera or something so I just have a little dab to share but I want you to know there's a lot more to this it goes a lot deeper than, than what I'm showing in this video and uh if you guys want to practice this, I would definitely focus on the love and do it when you're in a calm, relaxed state of mind. All right, uh, I think that's it for now. I'm going to get back to enjoying my beautiful day, and I hope you enjoy the video. This is Trevor Seven. Good day. God bless, and namaste. Hello and welcome. This is Trevor Seven. This is going to be a volume kinesis demonstration, which could also be called entomopathy or bug manipulation or whatever you want to call it <laughs> but i'm just going to share some uh, clips and tips and a little bit of demonstrations of messing with some bugs now this first clip here is from an older video which i believe is telekinesis compilation part three and it was me trying to summon a butterfly and this is something that was kind of new to me i wasn't really able to do this until i started taking ormus and doing psychokinesis and you sort of just feel and discover this interconnectedness and that's the the key to it is just feeling that everything is a part of you and 
you know, and use your intentions and everything similar to the way you do telekinesis. But it's not like you're overpowering the animal or anything. It's it's more of a dance than a, a, a force, so to speak. But uh, it finally lands on my hand. I didn't actually capture it landing on my hand because I got tired of waiting. But there you go. There's a little bit of footage. And it's kind of a cool little deal. And then this next clip is also from that same video, me petting a moth, which most moths won't allow you to touch them, you know. This one just kind of bonded with me a little bit. And then this next clip is a moth that I summoned and caught and released. So that's some older stuff. And this is one I did just a few days ago. Um, it's coaxing this uh, fly, trying to get it to walk onto my hand, you know. And flies are pretty fickle little creatures. They don't, you know, if they see any movement or sense something, they usually try to flee away from it. But I finally got this little guy to come up to me, which I thought was pretty cool. And he didn't stay long, you know, he kind of walked around a little bit and then flew away. And I got tired of holding that. If you had a P900, you know, them things are heavy. I got tired of holding it. But I did finally get a little bit more footage when he returned, came back. And there you go, summoning a fly in the palm of your hand, my friend. Okay, and now we're going to move on to wasps, which I wouldn't recommend messing with wasps because you could get hurt. But here's what little bit I know about them. Okay, when you see me using my finger and pushing, that's sort of a yang type energy, and I use that to direct. And the pull type thing usually makes them go airborne. And I think you'll notice here when I start to pull, as soon as I pull, I mean, they just they feel like they're being drawn and they need to fly. See, there's a little bit of a flicker there. He started to fly, and I'm trying to direct him, and there's a pull. All right, finally, I kind of missed that shot, but now here's another one. I think this one's a little better. But again, the, the yang energy, and it's not all about energy and empathy. It's a, it's a little bit different than manipulating inanimate objects. There has to be some type of bond of respect or something. And there you go. Yeah, see, I pulled to get him airborne, but then I forgot to quit pulling when I got him going the direction I wanted. So it's kind of a combination of both. You know, you pull to get him to go airborne and then push to direct. But anyway, it's just, you know, it's not like it's a... a exact science or anything and you can mess around with it and do it however you want. I'm just trying to share what little bit I know. All right and then here's another clip uh, summoning a wasp and I call it summoning a wasp. I don't know if that's the correct uh, terminology or not but I'm just trying to get the wasp to land on my hand so I can take it outside and as you can see sometimes they, they just simply don't want anything to do with you at first and you have to kind of be patient and stuff. There we go mission accomplished another free wasp who didn't have to die. And last but not least, here's one more clip of some fly summoning, or uh, excuse me, wasp summoning. And this little guy, he was uh, not very friendly. He didn't really want to be messed with. And I was, I was kind of sensing that, so I was trying to be very patient. I've actually trimmed this clip down several minutes <laughs> to make it watchable. But if the insect doesn't seem to want anything to do with you, you know, sometimes it helps to just kind of warm up to them a little bit. You can say nice things to them, or you can actually try to, you know, just pet and, and stroke them in a nice, loving manner and let them know that you're not a threat. There you can see me. I'm just kind of petting the wings of the wasp and letting it know, you know, I'm your friend. <laughs> you know, I love you. I'm trying to help you. That sort of thing. And just keep a nice, calm, quiet demeanor. You know how the dogs can sense fear, and I think insects and things can too, so... You know, just work with uh, critters that you like and love. I have a lot of respect for wasps. I think they're kind of neat little critters. If you ever watched them make a uh, wasp nest, that is amazing. But there we go. And finally, we get the little guy and freedom. <laughs> All right. Well, that's basically it. And, and I, you know, it's a little bit hard to catch these, these sort of things on video. I've done tons of things that would make you, you just scratch your head and say, what the heck? But I try not to speak of things I don't have on video. So this is kind of installment one. I hope to capture some more of this sort of footage and, and make a volukinesis part two. But here you go. This is kind of a recycled upload. I know everyone was anxious for an upload, and I, I'm more than happy to share this with you. And I hope to have more to share in the future. All right. Appreciate you watching. This is Trevor Seven. Good day. God bless. And namaste.